What's going on guys? It's Wake Em Off and today we'll be playing a game called Dagon. I don't know what this is about, so Yeah, we're gonna have fun with this and Yeah. Alright. We guys are doing good. If you haven't hit that like and subscribe button for future videos. Okay. The faithful interaction adapt adaptation of HP Lovecraft's work focused on the story and atmosphere. You will not find difficulty choices, action sequences, or inventory management here. And movement is limited to progress through locations along with the plot. I am writing this under an appreciable mental strain, since by tonight I shall be no more. Ward? During the game, you will encounter interaction elements. Some of them will allow you to continue your journey. Others reveal interesting facts and about the original short story, its historically background, and the author. All right. Some of the trivia is hidden. In order to find those secrets, focus your eye and look for the elder sign. All right. So it's like a little stick. I see him. Oh, what? Uh, my dudes, I don't know if you want me to read all. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll read it for y'all. Swilled. Love class letter. As to the letter, my case is punctualer. Okay, um, yeah, I'll just skim it and you guys can read it too. Okay. You can read this journal immediately or go back to the okay, alright my dog, thanks. What was this one? No. All good? What's this? Penniless, and at the end of my supply of the drug which alone makes life endurable, I can bear the torture no longer, and shall cast myself from this garret window into the squalid street below. That fucking ghost orb right by me? Oh shit. Is that dust or ghost orbs? Like, god damn, there's like a whole bunch of ghost orbs by me. Okay. Do not think from my slavery to Morphe that I am a weakling or a degenerate. Word? When you have read these hastily scrawled pages, you may guess, though never fully realize why it is that I must have forgetfulness or death. Morphine. All right. It was in one of the most open and least frequented parts of the broad Pacific that the packet of which I was supercargo fell a victim to the German Sea Raider. Oh, damn, the pirates. Oh, shit. Damn, look at this, look at this shit, dog. It looks good. Ah, damn. What is that, who's that? Oh, damn. Fucking pirates and shit. Ah, damn. The Great War was then at its very beginning, and the ocean forces of the Hun had not completely sunk to their later degradation. So that our vessel was made a legitimate prize. Whilst we of her crew were treated with all the fairness and consideration due us as naval prisoners. That's fucked up. Who's that? So liberal, indeed, was the discipline of our captors, that five days after we were taken, I managed to escape alone, in a small boat, with water and provisions for a good length of time. Nice job, dog. You got this shit, dog. I literally thought that was a, that was a turkey. What? What's that? We might not get everything. I when don't know. I finally found myself adrift and free. I had but little idea of my surroundings. I I could not do this. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
we don't even know like half of what's in the ocean. You know what I'm saying? It could be fucking megalodon, some kraken, the same. You don't even know, dog. You're in a little ass boat. That motherfucker could just a shark could just like chomp that bill, and you're you're pretty much dead. You're toast. Look, look at this. You're like literally out in the ocean. Never a competent navigator. Oh. I could only guess vaguely by the sun and stars that I was somewhat south of the equator. Yeah, I I, I don't fuck with that. Okay. But the longitude, I knew nothing. And no island or coastline was in sight. Oh, word. Well, at least you can tell the time. Fair, oh. And for uncounted days, I drifted aimlessly beneath the scorching sun, waiting either for some passing ship or to be cast on the shores of some habitable land. You don't have a sail or anything, Burr? Or paddles or shit? Oh, yeah, paddle. Okay. Was this? But neither ship nor land appeared, and I began to despair in my solitude upon the heaving vastness of unbroken blue. The change happened whilst I slept. Its details I shall never know. For my slumber, though troubled and dream infested, was continuous. <sighs> I told you, bruh. Damn. When at last I awoke, it was to discover myself half sucked into a slimy expanse of hellish black mire, which extended about me in monotonous undulations as far as I could see. That's what I'm saying, dog. Look at that thing, dog. That looks. This looks beautiful, though. Look, look at. And in which my boat lay grounded some distance away. Though one might well imagine that my first sensation would be of wonder at so prodigious and unexpected a transformation of scenery, I was in reality more horrified than astonished. For there was in the air, and in the rotting soil, a sinister quality which chilled me to the very core. How many are there? Holy fuck. The region was putrid with the carcasses of decaying fish and of other, less describable things which I saw protruding from the nasty mud of the unending plain. Like how many are there? It looks like... Or is that all the thing? You know what I'm saying? It's... Perhaps I should not hope to convey in mere words the unutterable hideousness that can dwell in absolute silence and barren immensity. There was nothing within hearing and nothing in sight save a vast reach of black slime. Yet the very completeness of the stillness and the homogeneity of the landscape oppressed me with a nauseating fear. The sun was blazing down from a sky which seemed to me almost black in its cloudless cruelty, as though reflecting the inky marsh beneath my feet. Damn. I'm gonna be inspired by a fish head. Damn, okay. So that's the dragon right there. It looks like a centipede water joint. As I crawled into the stranded boat, I realized that only one theory could explain my position. Through some unprecedented volcanic upheaval, a portion of the ocean floor must have been thrown to the surface, exposing regions for which innumerable millions of years had lain hidden under unfathomable watery depths. So great was the extent of the new land which had risen beneath me, that I could not detect the faintest noise of the surging ocean, straining my ears as I might. Nor were there any sea fowl to prey upon the dead things. Hurt? You gotta, you gotta eat what For you can, dog. For hours, I sat thinking or brooding in the boat, which lay upon its side and afforded a slight shade as the sun moved across the heavens. Why wouldn't you try to be getting out of there, dog? 
fuck? As the day progressed, the ground lost some of its stickiness and seemed likely to dry sufficiently for traveling purposes in a short time. That night I slept but little, and the next day I made for myself a pack containing food and water, preparatory to an overland journey in search of the vanished sea and possible rescue. How do you have food and water, dog? The fish is by you or what? What? What is, what is that thing right there? What, the, what is that? It's getting spooky. On the third morning, I found the soil dry enough to walk upon with ease. What is this? What? What is that? Oh, it's a fish. What is this thing though, dog? The odor of the fish was maddening, but I was too much concerned with graver things to mind so slight an evil and set out boldly for an unknown goal. All right, let's get it. All day, I forged steadily westward guided by a faraway hummock which rose higher than any other elevation on the rolling desert. What? What is that, dog? What? What? I, I don't know, dog. I don't know. This is sick, though. Oh, no, whale! Oh, it's like giant crabs, probably. Are they like, all dead? What? That night, I encamped, and on the following day, still traveled toward the hummock, though that object seemed <laughs> scarcely nearer than when I had first espied it. Why would you just sleep right here? Like, what even is this? What? You have the Damn, all right. More something new every day, dog. You don't even know what's down there, you know what I'm saying? Like all the way down there, we don't know. By the fourth evening, I attained the base of the mound, which turned out to be much higher than it had appeared from a distance. An intervening valley setting it out in sharper relief from the general surface. Too weary to ascend, I slept in the shadow of the hill. I know not why my dreams were so wild that night, but ere the waning and fantastically gibbous moon had risen far above the eastern plain, I was awake in a cold perspiration, determined to sleep no more. Such visions as I had experienced were too much for me to endure again. And in the glow of the moon, I saw how unwise I had been to travel by day. Without the glare of the parching sun, my journey would have cost me less energy. Indeed, I now felt quite able to perform the ascent which had deterred me at sunset. What? What? What happened if there's like a monster up there, dog? Like a fucking... The crab person is alone. Pack, I started for the crest of the eminence. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's do it. Let's grab that pack and let's get it. The unbroken monotony of the rolling plain was a source of vague horror to me. Yeah. But I think my horror was greater when I gained the summit of the mound and looked down the other side into an immeasurable pit or canyon whose black recesses the moon had not yet soared high enough to illumine. I felt myself on the edge of the world, peering over the rim into a fathomless chaos of eternal night. 
through my terror ran curious reminiscences of Paradise Lost and of Satan's hideous climb through the unfashioned realms of darkness. As the moon climbed higher in the sky, I began to see that the slopes of the valley were not quite so perpendicular as I had imagined. Tours can go down now? Okay, Ledges and outcroppings of rock afforded fairly easy footholds for a descent. Whilst after a drop of only a few hundred feet, the declivity became very gradual. We're just going for it. All right. You don't know what the you know what impulse which I cannot definitely analyze. I scrambled with difficulty down the rocks and stood on the gentler slope beneath. You have a flashlight, bro. Gazing into the Stygian deeps, where no light had yet penetrated. All at once, my attention was captured by a vast and singular object on the opposite slope, which rose steeply about a hundred yards ahead of me. An object that gleamed whitely in the newly bestowed rays of the ascending moon. Where are you going for it? Oh. Can't see anything, dog. That it was merely a gigantic piece of stone, I soon assured myself. But I was conscious of a distinct impression that its contour and position were not altogether the work of nature. Yeah, it's like a big ass flap. A closer scrutiny filled me with sensations I cannot express. For despite its enormous magnitude and its position in an abyss which had yawned at the bottom of the sea since the world was young. Also, somehow the water. Somehow the water like got drained and we're at like the end we're on like the the bottom of the I sea. Perceived beyond a doubt that the strange object was a well shaped monolith. I, I don't know. Whose Just massive me. bulk had known the workmanship and perhaps the worship of living and thinking creatures. Dazed and frightened, yet not without a certain thrill of the scientists or archaeologists' delight. I examined my surroundings more closely. All right. Oh. Okay. Oh, dude, I want to see other stuff too, dog. Snap. The moon, now near the zenith, shone weirdly and vividly above the towering steeps that hemmed in the chasm and revealed the fact that a far-flung body of water flowed at the bottom, winding out of sight in both directions and almost lapping my feet as I stood on the slope. Across the chasm, the wavelets washed the base of the Cyclopean monolith, on whose surface I could now trace both inscriptions and crude sculptures. What? The writing was in a system of hieroglyphics unknown to me and unlike anything I'd ever seen in books. Consisting for the most part of conventionalized aquatic symbols such as fishes, eels, octopi, crustaceans, mollusks, whales, and the like. Several characters obviously represented marine things which are unknown to the modern world but whose decomposing forms I had observed on the ocean-risen plain. It was the pictorial carving, however, that did most to hold me spellbound. Tegna contains many themes and storytelling methods that Lovecraft developed in his later works, such as... Visible across the intervening water on account of their enormous size were an array of bas reliefs whose subjects would have excited the envy of a Dore. I think that these things were supposed to depict men, at least a certain sort of men. 
though the creatures were shown disporting like fishes in the waters of some marine grotto. <laughs> there could be mermaids out there. You don't even know. We don't even know. Okay. Or paying homage at some monolithic shrine, which appeared to be under the waves as well. Of their faces and forms, I dare not speak in detail. For the mere remembrance makes me grow faint. Grotesque beyond the imagination of a Poe or a Bulwer. They were damnably human in general outline, despite webbed hands and feet, shockingly wide and flabby lips. Glassy, bulging eyes, and other features less pleasant to recall. Curiously enough, they seem to have been chiseled badly out of proportion with their scenic background. For one of the creatures was shown in the act of killing a whale, represented as but little larger than himself. Damn. Right. I remarked, as I say, their grotesqueness and strange size but in a moment decided that they were merely the imaginary gods of some primitive fishing or seafaring tribe. Some tribe whose last descendant had perished eras before the first ancestor of the Piltdown or Neanderthal man was born. Who knows? That's, that it could be still a thing. Awestruck at this unexpected <laughs> glimpse into a past beyond the conception of the most daring anthropologist, I stood musing whilst the moon cast queer reflections on the silent channel before me. Then, suddenly, I saw it. What? With only a slight churning to mark its rise to the surface, the thing slid into view above the dark waters. <laughs> Jesus! It darted like a stupendous monster of nightmares to the moonlight. About which it flung its gigantic scaly arms, while it bowed its hideous head and gave vent to certain measured sounds. Slowly I think I went mad then. Of my frantic ascent of the slope and cliff, and of my delirious journey back to the stranded boat, I remember little. Damn, okay. I believe I sang a great deal and laughed oddly when I was unable to sing. You go back to your boat? I have indistinct recollections of a great storm sometime after I reached the boat. At any rate, I know that I heard bells of thunder terms which nature utters only in her wildest moods. When I came out of the shadows, I was in a San Francisco hospital. Brought thither by the captain of the American ship which had picked up my boat in mid-ocean. In my delirium, I had said much, but found that my words had been given scant attention. Of any land upheaval in the Pacific, my rescuers knew nothing. Nor did I deem it necessary to insist upon a thing which I knew they could not believe. Every horror game has to open the door like that, bro. Once I sought out a celebrated ethnologist and amused him with peculiar questions regarding the ancient Philistine legend of Dagon, the fish god. Hard?
Okay. Yo, we don't know that. That shit could be real, dog. What? Yeah. Hey, who is that? I see him. But soon perceiving that he was hopelessly conventional, I did not press my inquiries. To find the job. Is Now what? Oh snap. It's my house like or am I still at the um the hospital? What what? What's happening? It says the word scientist is the word like good dog well it's been getting good but snap I don't know how you're not dead just it saying is at night especially when the moon is gibbous and waning that I see the thing I tried morphine but the drug has given only transient surcease and has drawn me into its clutches as a hopeless slave so now I am to end it all having written the full oh, you the information or the contemptuous amusement of my fellow men. Don't do drugs. And if you are, just be safe, dogs. Just be safe. If you need help, get help. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of ways to get help. I just want you guys to be safe. I love every single one of you guys. All right. What's that? if it could not all have been a pure phantasm. Nah, dog. I fucking should roar, dog. Like, nah, dog. A mere freak of fever as I lay sun-stricken and raving in the open boat after my escape from the German man of war. This I ask myself, but ever does there come before me a hideously vivid vision in reply. I cannot think of the deep sea without shuddering at the nameless things that may at this very moment be crawling and floundering on its slimy bed. Worshipping their ancient stone idols and carving their own detestable likenesses on submarine obelisks of water-soaked granite, I dream of a day when they may rise above the billows to drag down into their reeking talons the remnants of puny, war-exhausted mankind. Of a day when the land shall sink and the dark ocean shall ascend amidst universal pandemonium. What? The end is near. I hear a noise at the door as of some immense slippery body Why do you like drunk as fuck or is he like he's probably high morphine though? I, I I'm just fucking like dizzy dog. Alright, let's not find me. Oh 
Oh? God, that hand. The window, the window. Damn. That was really good. If you guys want me to play any other DLCs, just let me know. Just show this video a lot of love. Make sure you uh, like, share, subscribe, turn your post notifications on so you never miss out. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video.